Hello and welcome to Cruise 5. In our show today, we're talking to a lady who is the country director for Plan International Malawi, Phoebe Rasoga. Welcome to Cruise 5. And um, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name properly. Yes, you are. Yes. I expected to see another name in, in between because you people have got this knack of having names denoting what time you were born, <laughs> where you were born. What your father was doing when you were getting born, <laughs> where no, the I, car was at I, that particular time. I do have time. a middle name, that, but it's, it's very silent. It's it? Kazibira. It's a Kazibira. Kazibira. It is a very silent name. Yes. But it will always appear on some of my documents, okay. like my academic credentials. Yes. There will be three. Yes. But it's a name that is very silent. That name is my father's name, actually. I Kazibira. never changed. Yeah. Kazibira. Yes. You are Ugandan, I do understand. Mm hmm is Uganda where you've always stayed and grown or you were moving from one country to another growing up? Growing up. Um, the greater part of my life has actually been in Uganda. Okay. Uh, part of my work life has been outside of Uganda, maybe now coming to about almost 10 years outside yeah. of Uganda Jeez. and a portion of it in the United States as ah, well. You also worked in the United States? Uh, I'm actually married in the United States. Oh, are you now? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that, that, that's <laughs> interesting. I, I think we, might, we must spend a few more minutes on that. <laughs> we must yeah. spend a few more minutes on that one. Okay, is we Kas will. Is, is Kasoga an American? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's interesting. We're a very interesting family. Yes. Uh, my husband is a dual citizen of Kenya and the United States. Kenya and the United States. I am a permanent resident of the United States, but still a citizen of Uganda. And my daughter is only a single citizen of the United States. So we've not been able to get her citizenship for Uganda and citizenship for Kenya. So we are a United Nations family. And you're based in Malawi now? And I'm based in Malawi and my husband is actually in the United States. If you were food, it'd be a pizza because <laughs> you've got everything in it. <laughs> How yeah. was life growing up in Uganda? Tell me um, about the, the little Phoebe who was writing her name as F-I-B-I. -I. Uh, life growing up in Uganda, um, you know, pretty much when I look at uh, Malawi now, yes. I think that is pretty much what Uganda looks like mm -hmm. as I was growing up. Yes. Uh, we had challenges yes. around even common goods, uh, supplies, sugar. Yes. Uh, while I never really got to queue for anything, my yes. parents always did that. Yes. But at least, you know, walking along, you would see that we had challenges with some of these supplies. Okay. Of course, yeah, you don't have to queue for everything. You can, If you have money, you can buy sugar and yeah. things like that. But in terms of limitation of supplies, in terms of opportunities, mm -hmm. I think the country has made a steady progress. Mm -hmm. I would say in the last 20 25 years okay. they have been massive significant improvements okay yeah uh, they, they never say they say never ask a lady her age but i will not ask you your age <laughs> but i want to know what period it is that you're growing up as a young girl in your country um, which years in the late 70s in the late 70s yes and what were your parents doing at this time uh, my dad used to work for a cement factory. He okay. was a personnel manager, you know, HR managers today. He was a personnel manager then. Yes. And my mom was a teacher. Would I be wrong to say you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think 50-50, uh, yes. it's interesting. My story had a very positive ascend okay. until I was about 17. All right. So when I got to the age of 17, my dad passed. Oh, -ho. So when my dad passed, all these things that we talk about in development, property grabbing, and all that now swung into action. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, by the time we came back from the burial, everything in the house had been swept clean. You're kidding me. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting story. So, uh, first of all, my dad named me as his sole heir. Okay. And of course, there was a, a problem because I had brothers, I had siblings that were brothers, and oh. the family thought that was not an appropriate decision. But in his will, indeed, he did say, when I'm gone, this will should not be changed because I have written it under no duress. I have written it with full awareness. So finally, that was respected. And during the burial, I remember some of the clan leaders talking, you know, saying, oh, you know, she's going to get married exactly and uh, nobody is going to carry on that lineage 
But there is something that I always, uh, I always go back to. My dad used to say, my daughter, I know you make me very proud. And you know, those words now make sense. But then I used to wonder, he said that all the time. He said, you know, I have many children, but when I look at you, you're different. And he said, you know, you're a very caring child, and I think you take care of everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have money, I don't think you'll ever be selfish. Mm -hmm. And he always said that to me. I know you'll never let me down. And you know, it's interesting, when he was gone, those words really stayed with me. When I went to school, me, I never played with, with my studies. Uh, I always joke that, you know, when we were in school, people used to call me a bookworm. Yes. When I started working, people used to say she's married to her computer. Yes. When they had a daughter, they even asked, where did she get that child from? Because they did knew Did she I ever no have life. time? They knew I had no life outside work. But I guess the reason I took that path was because... I wanted to prove those guys wrong mm -hmm. that said she will never amount to anything. Yes. She's going to bring shame to yeah. our family. Me, I never got married at a young age. No. I told myself I will not get married. No relationships, no nothing. I focused. I purposed that nothing would derail me. And that was my ambition. So these days people still joke, are you still married to your computer? Because <laughs> I used to sleep with my computer next to me. <laughs> if I remember something at night, I wake up and I type it. <laughs> Before I forget. Now I yeah. have reduced a bit. I now have a notebook. If I remember an idea, I still wake up and put it on my it's notebook. It's a difficult habit to shake. <laughs> it's a difficult habit. It's a difficult to habit to shake. But slowly I have begun to shake it, especially <laughs> that I have a younger daughter now. Yes. That and demands have, some of my time. You have to be there for her. So I have to be there for her. Fantastic. And she doesn't like the laptop because <laughs> uh, she thinks it takes her space. So she always says, Mama, put the This is my out. space. Put it down. I should be here. So I never have my laptop with me when I'm with her. <laughs> That's our guest today in Cruise 5, Phoebe Kasoga. She <laughs> is the country director for Plan International Malawi. Are you a lover of music? Yes, I love music, gospel music, gospel particularly. Music. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, for now, I just want you to tell me the song that we're going to listen to first, and then we'll talk about your kind of music a little bit later. What's going to be our first song on our show? Uh, it's going to be Break Every Chain. Yes, Break Every Chain. Yes. There is power <laughs> in the name of Jesus. That is going to be the first one, yes. Okay, so we're going to start by breaking some chains in Cruise 5 today. This is a song by Tasha Cobbs, I do believe. Yes. Break Every Chain. Tasha Cobbs. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, call his name Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, turn it up. Come on, every voice declare it now. Were you the firstborn in your family? No. How did your father place so much trust in you when you were not the first? What, 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 what number were you in your family? Number two. Number two. You yeah. The first one being a, 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 a son, boy. yeah. Okay. I have a brother who is older than me. And who else is there? How many are you in your family? Ah. Uh, I had two brothers following me, okay. but one of them passed. Oh, okay. So it was me as the only girl, yeah. and I had three brothers, but I also did have uh, two half-sisters and two half-brothers as well. So it still makes sense that when your father passed, and mm -hmm. said, I'm leaving everything mm -hmm. to my daughter, mm -hmm. it was fairly difficult for people to take it. Yeah, then, yeah. it's over 20 years now. Yes. Uh, it was difficult. The world. Uh, that decision 20 years ago. Yeah, because I'm thinking, uh, I, you know, in development we call those positive deviants, yes. and what that means is that uh, you have people that have defied the normal, yes. that have defied tradition, and have decided to walk a path that others think is not appropriate, but they have seen beyond what others are seeing now. I believe my father saw beyond what we were saying now at that this, time. This is where I want you to beat your own drum. Mm -hmm. uh, something that people don't usually do. <laughs> what, what did your father see in you that made him, him say, mm -hmm. I, can, I can separate? Because, I mean, this is Africa. Mm -hmm. This is Uganda. Mm -hmm. People know in no time you might probably get married off to someone. Or yeah. you might marry someone. And you might take the bounty and run <laughs> off with it. <laughs> What uh, what my father might have seen in me, certainly, um, I can only imagine uh, what he has seen, what he had seen in me. Yes. 
But one of one of the values that I really hold dear in my heart is integrity. Okay. Um, and I know it's a virtue that is uh, difficult to find, especially today. Yes. People believe in quick things. People do not believe in working yes. for what they have. I am one of those that believes that whatever I have, I must earn it. I don't believe in getting things on, sil on a silver platter. Uh, two, commitment. Yes. When I say I'm going to do something, to do it. I do it over and above a hundred percent i give it you put your heart to i it. put my heart to it and some people put their hearts to getting everything that your father so diligently went for when he passed on mm -hmm. i have never understood this <laughs> this must have been your uncles yeah it's, it was um up. it was family members but you know what now that i think about it to be honest i think it happened for the better because I think if my dad had not passed, maybe I wouldn't be here today. I might have been a, sp a spoiled young lady, maybe. Yes. Uh, because I got everything I wanted, which I, I, I mean, I, I, is, is good, but I don't think it's also very good. Yeah. Um, putting me in that position helped me to, re to re rethink and reprioritize. Yes. Um, and make sure that certain things became priority okay. in my life. So, what path, um, academic-wise, did your life take? Because, uh, obviously, now, mm -hmm. you are the country director of Plan International Malawi. Yeah. It's not a very simple position to attain. Uh -huh. And I think it must probably have been built on what you achieved academically. What exactly did you do in your life? Yeah, so I did complete my education. I was a top performer in my school. I was among the top performers, always the best three in my class. Great. I never really went below that. Yes. Uh, in fact, when my dad passed, then I even became better. Uh -huh. Because then I think the me, you know, yeah, I, came I, I out. Mean, uh, at first, it was more like just for fun. And yeah. Now, it is like a now I knew my life, life depend, this, my life depends. My life depends on this. I can't mess with this. So I got a scholarship uh, for my high school. But also, of course, um, in my family, I was privileged that I had uh, a couple of aunties living abroad. So I had two aunties that actually came through uh, and decided to support me in terms of whatever else I needed, yes. uh, scholastic materials and everything. Mm -hmm. They really invested in me. Yeah. But uh, what I say to myself also, I do not want to let them down okay. because they're investing in me. I must do well. So they are happy with my performance and I make sure, you know, this flow of support does not get cut off because that was one of us, their conditions to say, you know, we, we're going to support you because, you know, your dad was an amazing person. And I think my father's personality played a critical role in terms of the people that have supported me along life. Mm -hmm. Like I've met people that have said, you know, your father gave me a job. Your father was very good. Your father was very generous, but my dad was very generous, very generous, like... Yeah. He just, if, even if he didn't know you, he met you, you had a problem, he will bless you. Even if he did not know you and you said, oh, I need school fees for my children, he will commit, I'll pay, you know, I'll pay to wherever they want to study. So me, when I come to do my job, yeah. I don't come to do my job because it puts food on the table. Mm -hmm. I come to do my job because I know I can make a difference mm -hmm. in so many people's lives. The income I have, I can use it, you know, to make a difference. And it is something I do. I don't even do it because, it, you know, somebody has compelled me to do it. But because I believe that a small things like that can change people's lives forever. So I'm very committed to my job yeah, as well. We're going to look at that ladder that she has um, uh, taken to get to where she is uh, right now shortly. But you said you are a huge fan of gospel music. Mm -hmm. Did that just happen or... Uh, um, it didn't just happen, Job, I'll be honest. Yes. Um, when I was in high school, we used to have what we used to call scripture union. Yes. So when my dad passed, we had, I was in a, a girls only school. So those girls in school, they really stood with me. They supported me, you know, they pampered me. They just made sure that I was comfortable. Yes. And that shaped part of, of my life. And, um, you know, because sometimes I would be like, I really need a friend. Who can I talk to? And that is what led my path to say, okay, I think 
when I feel like I need to talk to someone, I can listen to music, mm -hmm. I can sing, I can talk to God. You know, like, I can go tell him anything that I want. <laughs> wow. So, after breaking every chain, what are we going to break next? <laughs> Or are we beginning to make things now? <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, the second one will be Waymaker. Oh, yes. After by sign up. Chain, let's see if we can make a way now with Waymaker. And this is, is it sign up or sign up? I've always struggled to say this. Actually, <laughs> I have met this lady, but I've never had the opportunity to ask her how, how, how we should pronounce her name. And let's call her sign up for the sake of uh, this show. And um, this is Waymaker in Cruise 5. You Welcome back to Cruise 5. Today we're talking to Phoebe Kasoga. She is the country director for Plan International Malawi and she's just been telling us her amazing story but we've got a bigger story that we want to hear about and uh, it's about what we're doing to help women or ladies or girls you know to tell their story better. We're going to do that a little bit later on but how did you come to be <laughs> the country director <laughs> for plan uh, international malawi because but i know you've been uh, you've spent quite a, a, a bit of time in plan uh, international yeah. yes. and even when you were in uganda you were also working in different capacities yes yes so how, how which places have you been to working uh, which which positions have you held um i've held a number of, of positions okay um i joined plan as a national uh, water and sanitation um, advisor. I'm a hydrogeologist. Okay. Well, what what's that? Um, <coughs> that is a profession it's quite that a does mouthful. groundwater. Yeah, it's a, quite a mouthful. Just tell us what you do. Don't don't tell us the it's name more of the position. It's more around the you know groundwater surveillance <laughs> and things like that. Okay. All right. So, <coughs> um, water supply provision, if I'll put it that way. Okay. Fine. So when I joined. I joined at that level uh -huh. and I remember my first supervisor right now she still works for plan okay she's called Mia Hagland mm -hmm. and she was then heading our programs in Uganda mm -hmm. I was the youngest on the team when she hired me I was the youngest advisor on the team okay. and I remember she said to me one thing she said you know Phoebe if you maintain this one day the sky is gonna be your limit ah. and I don't know if she still remembers that yeah but that set the pace yes. for me yes so when people say they want to go and leave i said i'll act for you mm -hmm. i'll take on your role so i'll take on additional work but when i'm in your acting role i make sure i learn everything mm -hmm. so i almost acted in every role when okay. people go and leave i would tell her can i act for this person when they are gone you know because we don't have assistance for yes. those kinds of roles it's just you so if you're not there there's a problem mm -hmm. so you need somebody to stop gap so i did that then i got a new manager now a new country director and she then called me and said you know phoebe you have so much potential i don't know why you're only doing this small piece of work in this organization mm -hmm. so she said why can't you head fundraising manage the water sector but also head fundraising wow so then uh she said i'll give you six months because that position had been held by internationals uh, before i took over so she said i'll give you six months if you turn around I'll only do interviews after you've acted for six months. Wow. So after six, at about four months, then they opened it up. And um, I was confirmed on the role as a local mm -hmm. at that time. So she then kept saying, you know, um, you have so much potential. Keeping, it in, keeping you in Uganda is not good enough. So she said, I'm going to support you. If you see an international opening that you are interested in, please apply do your part if they need a reference from me you know i will do that you know at that time we received one of the biggest grants the first biggest grant in the institution it was a 50 million united states dollar grant wow which was you know like we really broke a glass ceiling at least within the institution mm -hmm. uh, because we normally will be a, a sub recipient in a, with other major organizations yes. so we got that as a, as a principal primary recipient then i moved to liberia Oh so when I finished my assignments uh, in, in Liberia, I moved to Tanzania. Okay. In Liberia, I was heading fundraising as yeah. well, but also managing a part of our programs, so that those that are donor funded, mm -hmm. and similarly in Tanzania. So when I moved to Malawi, I came here now heading our programs. Mm -hmm. So when our former CD left, then uh, 
the office decided <laughs> that I should act in this role. So uh -huh. that is how I have ended up mm -hmm. where I am. So that is my story. And she has quite a heart for ladies and girls and women in general. And that's the story that we want to hear when we come back from the break that we're going to go on. Are you going to continue listening to gospel music? <laughs> yes. This is beginning to sound like it's a, it's a gospel show. It might be a gospel she's, show. She's, for turn, a she's turning my show into a gospel is it cruise gospel or something? For, for, for a difference, because probably I might be the only person you host <laughs> on your show that has done gospel music. So that would but really it's, be it's different. It's perfectly okay. It's, a, it's, it's your choice. <laughs> Malawi after loves. It's <laughs> Malawi is pretty much highly Christian. <laughs> yes, it and is. And I'm sure your viewers will, they will love appreciate. Yes. So what's our third song going to be? <laughs> our third song is going to be I Surrender. Yes. Uh, it's a Hill song. song. Fantastic. I surrender. That's going to be our third song on Cruise 5 today. That's the liking of our guest, Phoebe Kasoga. <laughs> she is the interim country director for Plan International Malawi. Today, I want us to talk about Girls Get Equal Representation in Media, yes. uh, uh, which is a project that I think you'll be uh, you're rolling out shortly. Mm -hmm. But just tell me your experience working um, in the different portfolios that you've worked mm -hmm. and I, I, I mean before plan did you ever do some some other things yes 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 what? i did okay i did a couple of things okay. um my first job actually mm -hmm. when i graduated yeah. um i did apply mm -hmm. uh to to work okay and i did uh get a placement mm -hmm. uh with a, a danish funded project yeah. uh, it was called the rural water mm -hmm. and supply project okay. So that actually shaped my career life as well. Okay, all right. So that is why I said I am a hydrogeologist because mm -hmm. then we we're doing our groundwater investigations, right. drilling supervision, okay. working with communities to identify locations where they want their water points to be, working mm -hmm. on supply chain management and things like that that okay, are pretty good. much technical. All right. And when I finished that assignment, I did a short term stint with a flood response mm -hmm. for about um, maybe six months. Okay. Like we had a major flood. So I worked for a private uh, organization in the water sector. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to, to do quite good work. Then again, I joined another project. Uh, when Then we were starting decentralization. Mm -hmm. So part of it was building capacity of local governments, you know, around uh, joint planning and implementation of programs, particularly in the water sector. Okay. So I worked uh, on that program, I think, for two years. Mm -hmm. Then I joined another private company again mm -hmm. and worked for a renewable energy project funded mm -hmm. by the World Bank. So um, in your various uh, 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 positions and working for different organizations, what has been your experience of how the African woman or the mm. African girl is, mm. is portrayed or is treated in the media? Uh, mm. you, you had... Uh, you had an early introduction mm. to this kind of life when you when your when your parents when your yeah. father bequeathed everything to you yeah. and the clan felt this is not right <laughs> and all that because she is a girl really i mean let's yeah. face it uh, and i think that must have opened your eyes to oh so this is the kind of life that we're going to live mm. mm -hmm. so i think media if i go back to my own uh, home country yeah um I think we've had a bit of um, a bit of flexibility in the media, yes. a bit of reduced space yeah. of the media. But overall, I would say that the way I have seen media, particularly like in Uganda, media can break you or okay. make you. Uh -huh. Actually, yes. the media is very powerful. Yes. Uh, in terms of, uh, we have private uh, television companies, you know, top range, pretty much. But for me, the way I I looked at the media and the way they portrayed women, for example. It was very hard to see women in more strategic roles, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I always thought, you know, media is really for men. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was strange to have, you know, because that is how I'd been socialized. But, you know, later when I began to do more work around girls, mm -hmm. I realized, no, actually we need more ladies. If we are going to talk about the issues that affect girls, we need more ladies. The reason is... Joab, if you've lived the situation, you're a better advocate than you've not lived it. Mm -hmm. Like, you may talk about issues affecting girls, certainly from your experience growing up, maybe you have siblings, you have a mother. So from that perspective, but if you've lived that life, you are a better advocate. So 
my personal opinion is that um, while I didn't see a lot of women in the media, I remember there was one lady that she's now passed. She was called Ketra. She used to do what we used to call fashion police. Mm -hmm. It became a very, very popular pullout mm -hmm. in one of our local media houses, you know, like so. We always were mindful when you're going out to a public event because <laughs> you do not know where she would be having her scouts to do this. And, you know, it would just come out in the papers. You would not know <laughs> where they are catching you. <laughs> so I thought it was good. Why? Yeah. It helped us learn to dress better. Yeah. Not to just think you can come on a show like this and yeah. dress anyhow. Anyhow, yes. Uh, you know, go for somebody's wedding and dress anyhow. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, you know, Ugandans love nice things. They mm -hmm. dress. Yes. They dress to kill for yes. weddings and things like that. Yes. But she'll still do fashion police. So you need to make sure, you You're know. You're at your best. You're at your best. Uh -huh. So I thought she changed the dynamic around fashion. Mm -hmm. Especially for, you know, women yeah. in leadership positions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In young girls as well. So... In my view, then I felt, yeah, actually, you can do something that touches lives of people. And then as part of our, of our work, we did partner with a, an organization in Uganda called Straight Talk Foundation. Mm -hmm. And it promotes uh, sexual reproductive health education. And they used to have a pullout that they sent to schools every day of the week. I think it was Tuesdays. But they used that platform to educate young people around their sexuality, around access to reproductive health services. And I thought it was a very interesting program mm -hmm. because then I, I realized media has a lot of power because you know, this little pullout that they used to produce, they had a, a, an entire production house, but they just, it, they just focused on schools. They were not uh, making them for sale. They would get funding donations and just do this. Okay. So they would have a doctor come in and ask people would ask questions and a, a, a properly qualified medical personnel would answer questions of young people. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, um, I did figure out that actually media has a role to play because sometimes media can be portrayed in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you don't want to interface with the media because yes. maybe you say this yeah. and it will be you know, twisted, misinterpreted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So people are a little bit cautious around media. Yes. But I believe that um, just like any other industry, there's good people in the media that do not twist facts. That's true. That really report very positively, that amplify issues to the mm -hmm. public. But specifically then around this campaign mm -hmm. now that we've looked at the media in itself, the campaign has looked at a representation of women in the media. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at a couple of glossy movies, I think it's about 56 in a, a number of countries, about 20 countries. And the findings are that um, in terms of females playing in lead roles, females were likely to play in lead roles by about, you know, 27% and compared 42% for their male counterparts. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell us? It tells us that in this industry, perhaps we have more men. Maybe traditionally it has been a male-dominated industry. Mm -hmm. And now we see more females coming into this industry. And I don't know what your perspective would be, but it would be good <laughs> to hear also from the side of the males in this industry. What do you think about you know, the females you have in this particular industry? Because this study also revealed that females were more likely are going to be objectified, sexually objectified That's in true. some of these movies. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe females can play a better role mm -hmm. than that. Mm -hmm. We can have a female taking on Joab's job for today and interviewing me. I think that would be very good. But I know that uh, Zodiac has females. It does. Uh, yeah. It does. So here's something that has always bothered me. Whose responsibility is mm -hmm. it to rewrite the story of the woman mm. um, I, I tend to think that we live in a in a world where competition is mm. cutthroat yes and it's either you step up your game or you're out yes it's the rule of the jungle mm -hmm. it's the survival of the fittest mm -hmm. the woman mm -hmm. should not wait mm -hmm. for somebody to rewrite their story or mm -hmm. to tell their story mm -hmm. the woman should step up to the game and do what they're supposed to do claim their seat at the table. <laughs> I like the way you've put it. Now, I, I, I I'll start by talking about um, uh, gender and, and social norms, cultural norms, and stereotypes. 
So when you start from that angle, you'll understand uh, why we are saying we need to rewrite our story. Why? Because society has boxed us in a certain way. Uh, we've all been socialized. I don't know what your life story might be, but mm -hmm. you've been socialized in a certain way. You have your own perspectives and perceptions mm -hmm. about females. They could be positive, they may not be positive. And um, every other person in the world has been socialized in a certain way. But I think what has worked negatively uh, for young ladies and women has been that one, there are fields that we have traditionally say they belong to men. Mm -hmm. So society, in a way, when you grow up and people are telling you the same thing, it's like someone tells you, Joab, you'll never amount to anything. Yes. You'll never be anything. I'm yeah. sure you're here today because somebody spoke positively mm -hmm. into your life. Somebody said you can make it. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, Joab, you're good at your job. It gives you the confidence, you know, to do your job even better. So in order to rewrite her story, I think it's important to understand that we are coming from that backdrop that has placed young women in a certain position. I always use a continuum, say, of 0 to 10. Mm -hmm. If we place uh, young men and young women, say young men at a 7 and uh, young women at a 3, what we are trying to do in this campaign is to try and bridge that gap. Okay. Not to say that we will not work with men. I think we need the men. You've heard my story that my father significantly influenced my life. So we are not saying men don't have a role to play in this mm -hmm. campaign. But we are saying as we promote this campaign, we would like to see the role of females more visible. We need to rewrite her story. And the reason we're doing that or the way we're doing that, one of, one of them is uh, we have worked with a couple of ambassadors, specifically with this uh, commemoration of the International Day of the Girl. We did a uh, look at five ambassadors or we unveiled five ambassadors, four ambassadors. Uh, we have Anisha, the Commonwealth Award winner, boxer. boxer. Yes. As one of them. And people were like, you know, it caused a bit of, you know, is that okay? You know, is it, <laughs> is it okay? Is that an okay game? But really, it's a legitimate sport. It's yeah. just that now it's a female in it. Yeah. So why do we have Anisha? We have her because she has transcended the boundaries of stereotypes yeah. around boxing mm -hmm. being a predominantly male sport, which is true. It's a predominantly male sport. Okay. But if she's done well and reached that level, she can do well. We have Maria, the photographer, as well. Wow. Yes. In this industry. Mm -hmm. And we have an engineer as well, uh, Jennifer, I think, and we have Maureen, mm -hmm. the footballer. Yes. Football as well is for men. That's true. So we are saying, can we rewrite her story by challenging these stereotypes, by amplifying her voice, by giving her a space? If she qualifies, why not? You've exactly said you should up your game. Mm -hmm. So if I go to an interview with you, Job, mm -hmm. it should be what I put on the table. Mm -hmm. Not because you are a man mm -hmm. that you should be given the job. Mm -hmm. What do you bring on the table, Job? Are you a sellable product that if you're put on the shelf and somebody has to choose, they will choose you? Mm -hmm. For me, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. When you go to a shop, you have, you have a very lovely suit on you. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there is a thought process that went through your mind for you to select that. Mm -hmm. So it should be the same thing. If we go to a job, if I come to Zodiac and I have applied for a job, I would expect that you do not look at me as uh, my female gender, but look at me as any other person if i qualify why not now considering that all the songs you are selecting are gospel songs <laughs> i feel like you're preaching now <laughs> so how about we cut the preaching and we go to <laughs> our fourth song in cruise fire today <laughs> what's our fourth song going to be <laughs> no our fourth song uh is gonna be victory belongs to jesus oh by yes Todd Delaney. Todd Delaney. Victory belongs to Jesus in Cruise 5 today. <laughs> As we continue talking to our guest, she is Febe Kasoga, Country Director of Plan International <laughs> Malawi. That's Todd Delane. Victory belongs to Jesus in Cruise 5 today. We're going to wind up now. Yeah. But before we wind up, I've got a set of questions that I'd like to ask you. Mm -hmm. Um... But I'm going to give you this time to just tell us what you can, yeah. especially about this campaign that you're rolling out very soon. Because I think mm -hmm. it's, 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 an ex it's an exceptionally interesting one. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're yet to see if it's going to help to, to, turn, to turn the tide. Uh, yeah. but, but definitely, it's an effort worth having. Exactly. Um, what are some of the specific activities that you hope to do to With help rewrite 
the story um, of, of women in Malawi? Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of rewriting her story, I've already spoken about the female ambassadors, so we want to use that platform, okay. you know, to challenge uh, stereotypes. But also we, we are thinking of doing a couple of, maybe I'll call them interesting ideas, okay. look at you guys, the media, yes. and, 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 and try to rate those that have positively profiled, say, female figures that yes. are reporting more around child rights and um, make sure that perhaps we have say you you in the industry you have those annual awards for example yes so maybe do an award or something like that okay. to the best media house okay. that is positively reporting around this we think that would be interesting we want to look at uh females in leadership positions yes. in this country okay. specifically yes uh, in leadership positions or in strategic positions or positions of influence as mm. influencers in whatever role they play. They don't have to be CEOs. Mm -hmm. They might be a department head, but as long as they are influencers. So we want to look at them, amplify their voices, those that will be open to the camera. Okay. Because some may not be. But some don't want to be. Some don't, they don't want, want to be. They like to do yeah. their job mm -hmm. and just do it and end at that. So okay. that is something we want to do. But the other one is to more strategically engage the media. And that's something we need to figure out uh, with the media fraternity. Mm. Uh, because we've had this campaign actually job we running for the last one year. Yes. But I think we need to give it momentum. Mm -hmm. And given that the focus this year is around media, we believe that we can, we can work with the media more strategically than we have done mm -hmm. in the past. The reason is, like I said, you have high viewership. Mm -hmm. The numbers you reach we can never reach. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the power of radio, for example, mm -hmm. Zodiac as a radio mm -hmm. um, platform, mm -hmm. it transcends boundaries. Mm -hmm. The issues we are talking about, you know, the social and cultural norms in families that, you know, if there's a radio in the family, maybe it will be the father listening to it or something. We believe that this, this will transcend boundaries because if you're listening to a radio, even if you're the one tuning in, you know, accidentally, you might tune into this program. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the rest of your family will be able to benefit. Mm -hmm. So I think we can work more strategically with the media, collect content that is appropriate, um, that can be aired, you know, that can be relayed across. If we can get in strategic speakers, hosts, you know, people hosted by people like yourselves mm -hmm. to really amplify the voices of young people, speak about the issues that affect the day to day girl speak about the challenges they face but also not just focus on that mm -hmm. look at people that have been role models men that have been role models um how can we amplify their voices positively mm -hmm. that they will be able to make those right decisions if you have to choose especially in families where there's not a lot of money when there is money it's not always a problem mm -hmm. in malawi for example the, the rates of child marriages are very high that is a flagship campaign that we have and that fits into this work that we are doing so that is also going to be part um, of the work that we do as we okay. rewrite okay. her story we are participating in the science fairs to mm -hmm. make sure there's more girls enrolling into science subjects so i can talk about those uh, okay. unless you want me to talk a little bit more about the others you know, what i want you to talk a little bit more about is if you ever have time to do anything at all yeah i'm always worried <laughs> I'm always worried about people like you because <laughs> you've grown up your life <laughs> devoted to books and then to the computer and now you've got this busy office. Do you oh, ever find goodness. time to live your life? Um, I'm trying. <laughs> she says she's trying. I'm getting better at Is it. Is it working? <laughs> I'm getting better at it. At least I go out, you know, I okay. go out. I, I like, I like, I, I'll be honest, I like to shop okay not buying but say window shopping yes <laughs> so i like i mean we don't have a lot in malawi yes. and that you know but we have at least the gateway more okay so sometimes i just go and look at the nice stuff we have over there <laughs> yeah, right so every weekend i make sure i go out mm -hmm. i love to eat ice cream yeah. so i'll go out and do an ice cream yes i like to watch movies mm -hmm. as well okay so i make time for that but i also love to listen mm -hmm. to music yeah so I make time yeah. for that. I love nature whenever I have time to yes. do it. Yes. I can do that. The only thing is, you know, I'm not like this kind of person that will drive all the way from here to Chitipa to go and look at nature. But if the job takes me there, then I can take two extra days <laughs> and do some interesting stuff there. I, I always find it fascinating. I think it's a cultural thing. But I, I know of people who will literally 
flying to another country on a holiday all alone. And I, I, I know it's, it's perfectly okay, but I'm still trying to <laughs> understand how much fun they get out of that. Yeah. One person packs their bags mm. and they go to Iceland. <laughs> I, and I mean, like, okay. And they have a, 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 a moment of their life there and it's, it's great. It's okay, yeah. But still, we I think for, 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 for most of us, it's a mm. bit difficult to understand. I love, I, uh, while I love to work, yeah. I, I am a pretty people person. Okay, all right. I love people around me. Yes. I draw a lot of energy from people. Uh, okay. I don't like to be alone. Yeah. So you hang out a lot with So with, like with if I have to go out, yeah. you, I need to go with you'd want some to, people, You'd want yeah. some company. So if I have to go alone, then I'm most likely not going to yeah. do it. <laughs> so you keep on I changing like the departure time, time and then you'll be like, you know what, maybe I'll just yeah. go next maybe time. Maybe I'll go next time. <laughs> yeah. Let's wind up. And I've got a set of questions, as I said. The first one, I want you to tell me your full name. My full name, Phoebe Kasoga Kazibira. Do you have any tattoos? No. Do you have any piercings? Yes, on my ears. <laughs> do you have children? Yes, I do. Have you ever shot a gun? No. Have I you? Have not. Huh? <laughs> you have that not. Would be interesting. <laughs> it would be interesting. <laughs> it could. It could be for fun or. Yeah, it could be for fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever cried over someone? Cried over someone. Maybe no, maybe yes. Like if someone has let me down, like yes. when I'm, you know, when I'm upset, then yeah. I'm like cry to myself okay you know that let it out but yes. you've cried over someone for sure yeah I yes so. so it's a yes have you fallen in love before yes have you killed a chicken before no have you gotten into a fight before no have you gotten any surgeries yes have you ever been hospitalized yes have you donated blood yes do you know your blood group yes have you ever smoked weed no would you smoke weed no i don't think so have you ever drank alcohol? Unfortunately not. Eh? I should have maybe tried in the younger years. <laughs> but since I didn't try then, I Would can't you learn. you drink alcohol? No. At this age now, no. I didn't do it when I was younger. I'm unlikely going to do it, to be honest. That's, that's quite okay. Have you broken someone's heart? I don't know. Have I you had a crush on someone? Uh, yes, maybe when I was younger, yes. Do you have a crush on someone? No, not now. She said, not now. Phoebe <laughs> 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 okay. it's been a pleasure talking to you. And I Thank wish you, you all the best. Thank you, Job. Thank you so much. And we still haven't selected our last song. Yes. Yes, and it's going to be, surprise, surprise. I know who I am. She knows who she is. Of course, that's from Sinak. I know who I am. And that's how we wrap it up in Cruise 5 today.